about a year ago we released this video a full guide on how to run and set up your instagram as a music producer let's just say you guys really enjoyed that one however since that video the game has changed things have changed we've learned new things and have adapted our ways of running our instagram your instagram is the best tool you have for building an audience making money and an absolute cheat code for networking we see so many producers out there who are either not using their instagram to the fullest of its potential or they're doing so many things wrong leaving them missing out on opportunities and just slow slowing down their growth. Let's get you right. We're going to cover it all today. All the new things we've learned. So take notes and get ready to tweak your Instagram as we go through this video. Let's get into it. First up, boys, we want to show you our progression since our last video just over a year ago, how it's grown, how it's changed, because looking at it now, we've changed a lot of different things here. But overall, starting from zero followers back in the start of the last year and getting to about 3,700, we did a pretty good job. So you can see here, this is what our Instagram looked like in March 2023. So I think we started it in about middle of January. You may look at this and think it's okay, but there's a lot of things here that we were doing wrong. First of all, I mean, there's not many followers, and that's a big thing with Instagrams to make them look credible. To get responses so many things having a big following helps a lot and we're going to get into that later in this video one stop for loops was in our bar that was just instantly boxing ourselves into being loop makers not even saying that we're producers this is so niche and only producers would understand this this was a flaw another thing the canva profile picture we quickly changed that as you can see but that was a bit of an l we realized it was better just to have a clean profile picture of us and this logo was free on canva so heaps of other people have already used this format so that was another flaw we had established 2022 in the bar which is is just irrelevant no one really cares and you can see we were posting all of our loop kits you can see we did start posting a couple photos in the studio which was good we understood that that's what we need to get into so that was good but too many loop kits and now obviously we've removed all our loop kits from our instagram and we'll put them on our sound store global audio so it doesn't clog up our instagram because we want our instagram to be more lifestyle focused so anyone can be following it where if you're just posting your beats and your loop kits that is really focused on producers and artists so you're not opening yourself up to more opportunities and then we move into September 2023, new profile picture, new bio, straight away people know we're a producer duo. One thing we've had going the whole time is a good link tree. People can easily get to our YouTube, our website, but still here in September, we had YouTube and Loops arrow down which it looks a little bit geeky and would rather just people go onto it and see for themselves not really necessary to have that there but at the time we had no credits so we were kind of just trying to fill up the space to be honest and you can see we did go on a holiday that year and went to some studios that was good and we started posting more lifestyle content more posts of us in studios that was really good our highlights definitely improved at least the covers of them definitely improved here the instagram is getting better overall hit over a k on instagram that helped a lot this was not that bad, but still room for improvement. And then we move into April, 2024. This year, actually, only a couple of months ago, we got 2,800 followers and that just helped a whole ton, just making the whole Instagram look a lot better. New profile picture. We went on another holiday, got another pick. We just thought this one looked a lot cooler. You had the view in the background. The studio one was cool, but after having it for about a year, we thought it's good to refresh your profile picture occasionally, keep things new and interesting. And then we added some credits in the bar. So I think we may have had credits in September, but in April, we got to the point where we had at least four or five guys that had decently sized Instagrams that we could put in there. You don't want to be putting in artists with under 50K in your bar that nobody knows. It's not really serving you in any way. We've got a JI snippet and some big Middle Eastern placements so we threw them in there even though they're not huge names I think it did help for credibility and making the page just look a little bit better we also started posting actual placements as posts we got the song Kama Sutra which we posted here and we did still have a loop kit up here which now we don't but at the time we hadn't created a new sound store Instagram page which now we have which works a lot better the page started looking good obviously we post that snippet with JI there more lifestyle photos the page was coming along and then now we move into September 2024 home from the brazil trip we got the little ticker and nims snippets threw them in our bar that made it look way better over 3k followers the highlights have changed a little bit we're always changing the covers putting cool photos that look good with our posts we started including our reels on our home page which um, means people can see them straight away we got another placement gonzi montana we posted that posted the nims snippet i mean this is just doing more of what we were doing in april just improving it obviously we have our sound store page here now so we got the loop kit off our home page got a bunch of followers while we we're in brazil which helped a lot this instagram is looking way better if we message someone and they see this instagram compared to any of our 
previous versions, they're so much more likely to respond or to even look at the message if they see there's a decent amount of followers and the page is sick. They've got some placements, some photos of themselves, and they seem like cool guys. So that's how we've progressed so far. I think this is important to see because back in March and September, we did know about wanting to put credits, post snippets, but we didn't have all these things. So it shows you that do the best you can with what you have in terms of content and achievements, but always aim and shoot for more. And we did all this in one year. It definitely is achievable to fix your Instagram up within a year or two. This is how we progress so far. Now, next up, we want to make this point really clear that a lot of people are leaving opportunities on the table and just absolutely have dead Instagrams. Just to show you how much this happens in the producer community, we're going to go on YouTube right now. Let's go Drake type beats, search that in. This guy's posting Drake type beats. See, he doesn't even have his Instagram in his YouTube. So that's already a red flag. Let's see, please. Oh my gosh. We're not even going to go on this guy's thing. You need to have your Instagram as links on your channel real easy to get to. How's anyone going to find your Instagram if you don't have links? Here's an example. We found this guy. He posts consistently, and then you go on his Instagram, and he's got 30 followers. And I mean, he's got a, he's got a post. He's probably good at making beats. He's got a decent channel set up. Yeah, it looks like he could do well with this. But you go to his Instagram and he's got 30 followers. You can see he's trying to grow. He's got some reels going, but he's not taking advantage of what Instagram has to offer. If he was to message any producer to work with them, if they see this profile, they're not likely to respond at all. Just because his Instagram is completely dead, that's gonna mean he's missing out on a lot of opportunities. Now, if you're wondering why you should be trying to grow your Instagram as best as possible, here are three benefits that we've had from growing Instagram over the last year and a half that you definitely want to be benefiting off to. The first one is Instagram being an absolute networking cheat code. Now, over the last year and a half of having our Instagram, the benefits of networking have been different and the levels of people we've been able to reach and hang out with have got bigger and better as we've grown our Instagram. Every couple of months as our Instagram grows and grows, it feels like we're able to reach new producers and new artists that we were never able to reach before just by sending them a message or unsending an old message that we sent, sending them a new one and starting to work with them and send off our samples and beats. And this is most likely due to the fact that when they go and check their requests, they see that there's a page in there with a good amount of followers. They've got mutuals, it's a reputable page, they've got placements and etc. So there's absolutely no reason that someone would want to leave us in requests. As well as big producers and artists following us back, making us seem even more reputable when other big producers see that their friends are following us. And another thing that may help is that we've always got a story live. So whenever we reach out to somebody, whether they open that message that day or one or two weeks later, they can go check out our story. We've always got something on there and immediately they're able to connect with us in some sort of way. With Instagram, you literally can reach pretty much anybody in the music industry just by sending a message. Another benefit of Instagram when you've built it to a good standard is you're always able to keep your fan base engaged with whatever you're doing. A lot of this is down to stories. You can give advice, you can drop source to people, keep them updated with what you're doing, get them to keep up with your YouTube content, whether you're dropping a sample pack, posted a new type beat, doing a vlog, anything on YouTube, you can put a link to it and keep people on your Instagram going over to your YouTube to stay engaged with you. And another benefit of having an Instagram to a high standard is being able to promote your products. Whether you're selling sound kits, you're selling sample packs, or even if you're just selling your beats, when you've got an Instagram with an engaged fan base, it's basically just free promotion to your audience to sell whatever products you've released or are working on at the current time. The good thing about these benefits as well is that they're always growing. The bigger your Instagram gets, you're able to sell to more people, make more money with your products, and you're always able to reach out to more producers and artists to work with and get your music out there to more people. There is no limit to the benefits you can gain off of Instagram. Next up, we've touched on this, but we want to make it clear that Instagram should be your home base for your brand. This is where people are going to connect with you on a daily basis. And from here, people can go to your website, go to your Spotify and go to all the different areas of your business. But Instagram for us is our home base and what we recommend you using the most and taking care of the most as it is so powerful. So make sure to document all the different parts of your business on the Instagram. Just like we said, posting YouTube videos when they go live, posting about new products, placements you've landed so people who are on your Instagram are notified about everything that's going on in one place.
Let's get into your actual Instagram page, the specifics and setting it up so it looks really good. Starting with the profile picture and the bio setup, hugely important. With the profile picture, when people are DMing you, that's what they see. When a story goes live, that's what they see. On your page, they're seeing it. Whatever you choose this image to be, you have to realize that people are gonna associate that image with you. What we recommend is a cool photo of you, maybe in a cool location with a cool backdrop that looks cool. A studio photo, as you can see here, BS Beats, of you working that looks sick. Or a closer up photo of your face or of you so people can clearly see you either of those these all look cool here you can see they all look cool we always prefer these over having logos as it's more of a personal connection and people can actually see you in your real life next the bio you want to keep this clean and simple don't overdo it if you have credits obviously throw your credits in there but we always have this thing that if we didn't have big credits with i don't know at least over 500,000 followers on instagram we just didn't put them in but as soon as we started getting some snippets with bigger people we did throw them in so if you have the cool placements throw them in but otherwise it's fine if you just keep them out as well you can put the label on your instagram that says you are a producer or you can write producer or platinum producer sometimes people put if they have that achievement this is just letting people know that you are a producer because when you come across people on instagram sometimes it can be confusing to tell if someone's a producer or an artist or a manager so it is good to clarify that other than that you can put any achievements if you're grammy nominated platinum gold diamond whatever we see producers or artists having an emoji that they always use that they put in their bio and it kind of relates to their brand a little bit so you can also do that if you have an emoji that you really like you can put that in your bio as well and then of course you've got to have a link tree in there so people can go to your youtube your spotify with your produced songs we sometimes put our vlog links in there as well the link tree is a must people aren't going to know that you have a youtube or a website so definitely set up your link tree in your bio and the last thing is your following to follower ratio this is more important than you think because when you see guys who are following 7k people and they've only got 2,000 followers it looks kind of body and spammy so we always make sure we don't go over a thousand people following the lower the better to be honest you don't want to be following a bunch of random people and you want to always make sure your follower ratio is way higher than the amount of people you're following Moving into highlights, this is something that we recommend to have. Just showcasing the best stories that you've posted on your Instagram. You don't want to be spamming too many highlights and having heaps of random stuff that people probably don't really care about. Just the best studio sessions, best placements, the coolest photos, all those kinds of things. And one thing we want to mention that we didn't say in our last Instagram video is about being selective with the covers for your highlights. Always be changing these rounds and keep the colors in mind about the posts on your homepage. This may sound kind of picky, but if the colors aren't matching with the post, it can just make the Instagram not look very good. So these are just small things that all add up to making your Instagram seem a whole lot more aesthetically pleasing and just high value in general. And another thing, you don't need to have heaps of these highlights. You don't want to be scrolling across for ages trying to find what people have been up to. Just have a couple, two, maximum of six highlights on there. And when you've got highlights from a couple years ago, you can merge them into new ones and just make them look better all in one highlight. Next posts on your Instagram. The best things to post are photos and videos of you in studios. That is the best content you could put as a producer. Studios, working with other people. You can also put stuff of you working at home or on the go. Placements, plaques and anything to do with your musical achievements are really good to post as well. They give your page credibility. They can also just look sick. So do post those when you get them. But again, you don't really want to be posting real low level placements or things that aren't so valuable. So just post the big, big achievements. The next thing is big snippets. At first, we weren't sure sure about posting snippets because we didn't really think that we had earned them or that people were going to care that much but someone messaged us when we first got a snippet with a big artist and they were like bro you need to post this when i posted my snippets it got heaps of engagement we posted it and realized that any credibility with any artist that some people know is good credibility and posts with snippets do really well because people are also just curious about the unreleased music with artists and with our low ticker and nim snippet that we posted even though they aren't official songs just having the snippets with those artists is going to help a lot when we want to work with people because even though they aren't released people know that we still have the connections and we were still able to work with them so don't hold back on posting snippets and the last thing is lifestyle pictures cool pictures of your travel your city whatever you're going out for a nice meal those kind of things they can also make your instagram look sick and it's good to balance the music and the lifestyle stuff for your whole brand and you as a producer you almost want to frame yourself on your instagram like you're an artist it doesn't just have to be about the music that is a key of being a producer on instagram you need to set yourself up as an artist all right, for your reels, you're gonna be scrolling on reels for about four to six hours a day doing market research. Just before you go to sleep, make sure you're on reels, just like getting a bit of research in. All right, max brightness and, and night shift turned off with your Vision Pros on. Reels are a great form of content as long 
as they're sick. We see lots of people making reels that just aren't sick. And if anything, these kinds of reels actually destroy your brand rather than growing it. Here you can see on the right of the screen, the reels that we've got on our main Instagram, as well as our global audio Instagram, where we promote our products and show people our musical process. You can see the lifestyle ones on the top, which is on our main Instagram. Even just by the thumbnails, you can see the coloring looks sick. The locations look sick. There's always cool music on our reels. And we get so many people commenting and DMing us, asking how we do our reels. Your reels are sick. Keep posting them. I've watched this 10 times, all this kind of stuff, which just goes to show that this lifestyle content, particularly through reels, does have an impact on growing your audience and engaging them. And you can see on the bottom, we've got our reels of us making music and showing our process. We wouldn't be posting these kinds of things on our main channel because it just clogs it up. And there's a big mistake we see with lots of people. They clog up their Instagram with just heaps of reels of them making music. It's okay to have some reels that are super sick with a crazy sample or a beat, cool videography, but doing random reels where you just set up your phone and you just make a sample and post hundreds of them over time just ruins your Instagram. So instead of clogging up our main Instagram with these kinds of reels, we move them over to our global audio Instagram. As the reels themselves promote our products, we're always using our own sounds. So it makes a lot more sense to have lots of reels of us using our own products because it's promoting it at the same time. You need to have fresh ideas of content to be able to succeed and capture an audience. What we're trying to say here is if you're trying to make a reel like Nico Byron and just put up a phone and show you making a sample, there's no reason somebody would want to watch you. They're just watching Nico Byron. Next, this is the most important thing with your Instagram and the most powerful way to use your Instagram stories. We like to do these daily stories. We're not going to ramble on about this, but you can see on our Instagram, we post a bunch of different types of stories. You working, you going to the gym, you out somewhere meeting people, a new YouTube video, whatever it is, as long as it's something related to you and your music and you hustling, that is going to be able to relate with people. Be super active daily if you can, but just try not to be too repetitive and posting the exact same things every day. Keep things fresh. Occasionally switch it up ask a question or just drop some thoughts make it worthwhile for people going on your story and do it all the time next up boys throw out that android you want your shots to be good quality this is your stories and your posts get yourself an iphone for some reason whenever people have androids their page looks terrible with photos before you post them you can do little bits of editing we like to do that just boost the colors boost the contrast a little bit sometimes you even need to crop photos you can see the photo down here originally it looked like this we just did a little bit of editing changed the crop a bit so it was more vertical add a little bit of colors these little things just make your posts look a lot better don't be throwing the vibrance and the saturation up too much because it just looks really bad. Just subtle edits can make your page look a little bit better. You know what you need to do with your Instagram. Now, how are you going to get some followers to get that credibility? We all know if an Instagram has under a thousand followers, it just doesn't look as good. That's the complete truth. And once you get 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, it just makes life a lot easier. And from there, just continuously growing makes things even easier. These are the three ways to gain followers and how we've gained followers. First thing, posting content and getting organic traffic. We're going to get into this in depth in the next slide. The second thing is placements. When you get big placements, no doubt you get a bunch more producers, maybe even artists going to Instagram because they see you in credits of songs. And you know this works because when you go out there and try to find new producers, you're going on Genius, seeing who's produced songs, and you always go to the Instagram and follow them. This is a way that some people are getting a lot of followers by getting big placements, but you do have to be getting those top placements for this to get you a lot of followers. But it is a way that works. And the next thing is getting shout outs or story reposts. We experienced this in Brazil, especially when we were in studios with different producers and artists would take photos and tag them that repost that or they'd take a photo and tag us the followers were just coming in every day pretty quickly because it was always a story live of someone tagging us in the story meaning their audience can see us and go onto our page so that's another way we've gained some followers so moving into the organic content, the main way we've been able to gain followers, there's three different main ways that you can make content to get that organic traffic. One is reels. This is great because they can be easier to make than YouTube videos and people can go straight on your Instagram and follow you straight from a reel. And there's people out there killing it, building their whole producer Instagram off reels. But like we said earlier, you have to be doing something unique, interesting and fresh 
to be able to make a click and get into the algorithm to start actually getting some followers. YouTube, I think this has been the main thing for us, getting our followers, our vlogs, our tutorials, our cookups, all of those views on YouTube. We've been consciously funneling them over to our Instagram by having our links set up correctly so people can go to our Instagram, shouting our Instagram during the video, having our Instagram in a pinned comment. All these little things make it so much easier for people to go over to your Instagram and you do have to constantly incentivize people to go over to your Instagram. So even if you're a type B channel or a sample pack channel, let people know in the description, maybe even in the video on screen and in the pinned comment, go over to my Instagram, daily updates, follow the journey, make people want to go over to your Instagram and make it easy for them to go there. And the last way, TikTok. Some people have made TikTok work for them. We haven't really gotten into it. We think it's a little bit too volatile for us. We see a lot of people never getting any traction on TikTok or they go really well for a couple months and drop down, account gets almost shadow banned. But it is a way that some people have made it work. TikTok is another way. Two extra features from Instagram that we don't actually use at the moment is firstly the verification check. You can buy this now. But one thing that we'd recommend just from our personal experience of seeing people with a bought verification tick is it almost just turns you into a bot. <laughs> it does. If you've got the verification tick, especially when you're under 10K followers, people instantly know that you paid for it and you almost look more like a bot than you were without it. And saying this, the verified tick can be good. Just hold it off for later when you've got more followers, you've done more and people know you without the tick as well. And the second feature from Instagram, which we don't use, but we would if we could because it's just not available in our country right now, is a broadcast channel. Now, I'm pretty sure this is just exactly the same as a Telegram, but it's integrated into Instagram. And it just allows you to connect with your followers that opt in to your broadcast channel. And you can post videos, you can post photos, drop some source, some advice. But it's just another great way to engage your audience if it's eligible in your country. Now you've got everything you need to know for running your Instagram the best you can as a producer. The final thing we want to leave you with, and this is important, is always tweaking and adapting. Being successful in anything requires you to always evolve, adapt, and improve the way you do things. At least once a week, change something on your Instagram. Captions, highlights, the covers on your highlights, removing photos from posts. That's something that they added to Instagram that you can do now. Tweak your bio, change something in your link tree. We're always doing this every couple days or every week. Just make these small improvements to your Instagram, they go a long way in the long run. However your Instagram set up is how people are going to perceive you and you want to have it set up exactly how you want it to be. Always tweak and adapt your Instagram. That's the video boys. We covered everything there. If you have any questions, comment down below. Go check out our Instagram and see how we've got it set up. Check out our daily stories. You might find some inspiration there. If you need more help with this, we've got the one-on-one -on -one calls. Cheers for watching boys and we'll see you in the next one.